Beaker Beat. It's Monday, December 19th, 2011. In this week's Beaker Beat, tis the season to be jolly, and that's how one life sciences company is making their shareholders feel. We'll explain coming up. Plus, many CEOs have been acting like Ebenezer Scrooge with R&D budgets, but some seem to have met the ghost of Christmas future and are spending billions to save Tiny Tim. And do holiday social gatherings scare the dickens out of you? Well, there may be a way to overcome your fright with a drug spray. And no, it's not pepper spray. All that and more on this week's edition of Beaker Beat, brought to you by Life Technologies. To learn more about Life Technologies, visit their company webpage on Beaker.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Beaker Beat. I'm Mike Justice. Thanks for tuning in. Joining me this week for a special holiday edition is Allie Lee. Welcome back. Thank you so much. You know, Mike, it's really great to be here after a little bit of an absence, but I have to tell you, last Christmas, you made me a cartoon and nobody got to see me. Oh, but it was a really funny show. Besides, no cartoons this time. So, uh, and I got you a present, so it'll be fun. It better be good. Okay, Vin. Now I know why you haven't been back here in a while. Here's this week's top story. While the holiday season normally brings families together, Covidian is breaking its family up, but this breakup should be a good thing. The maker of surgical products and drugs plans to spin off its pharma division into a separate company that would be better able to compete in the growing pain management area. The split should take up to 18 months to complete. The drugs unit generates $2 billion in annual sales, with about two-thirds coming from the U.S. market. Meanwhile, the company's medical products business has annual sales approaching $10 billion. Now, according to Bloomberg, Covidian had been trying to sell the unit when talks broke down earlier this year. One analyst said, quote, the pharma division has been a drag on the company's top-line growth rate, but the spinoff should provide a relief. Investors agreed with the move, sending Covidian shares up over 3% on the news. The shares had fallen over 7% this year before the announcement. The company's plan follows a recent trend of life science companies, such as Abbott Labs and Pfizer, who have shed units in favor of their core businesses. Those companies have also seen a bump in their share prices as well. So, tell us what you think about this or any other story in today's show. It's very simple. Click on the orange button below us, a box will pop up. Type in your comments, send it to us. I promise I'll read and respond to every one of them. What are you looking at? Your hat. Does this say, I've been naughty and I've been nice? Yes, it does. Thank you for noticing. Was the store out of ones that said, I'm obnoxious and loud? <sighs> You're not very nice. Santa's not coming to your house. Oh, well. And we're putting our money where our mouth is when we say we want to hear from you. We want you to send us a photo of you or you and your coworkers together while surfing Beaker.com or watching Beaker Beat. Just like this one by Jeremy, although you don't have to look that ridiculous. We're giving away two prizes at the end of the year for two categories. One for the most people in the photo, easy. Another for the most creative photo. What are the prizes you ask? Is it a pony? No. A massage from Jeremy? Thank goodness no. I knew Porsche! Hey, I'm not Bob Barker. Although I did spay and neuter my pets. Don't worry, it's a surprise, but it'll be worth it. So start snapping those pictures and send them to BeakerBeat at Beaker.com. Hey, wait a minute. I'm a cartoon again? Well, we had these clips lying around from last year, you know. So I thought maybe we should use them. Well, at least you got your character right. A bald, perpetual loser. <gasps> well, yours is right on, too. A loud, annoying, bossy girl. <gasps> well, does this mean I get to pull the football away from you so you land on your butt? <laughs> no, but we'll get to see this awesome dancing. The Frankenstein Kid is my favorite. As you probably know, many big pharma players are cutting costs with R&D right in the crosshairs when trimming the bottom line. But some companies are taking a different approach. Eli Lilly is one example, and Merck has also committed a huge chunk of change to R&D. As a result, Merck CEO Kenneth Fraser has taken heat from Wall Street about the U.S. drug giant's $8 billion R&D budget. Merck's stock performance has lagged that of R&D slashing Pfizer. Frazier is defending the budget, pointing out that in the history of the pharma biz, the groups that stay on the leading edge of science come out on top. He said, quote, if you look in the past, there have been other fallow periods for R&D, but over the long term, science has always made progress, end quote. Clearly, in the short term, making cuts to R&D helps the stock price, but Merck and some others are betting that this is a marathon, not a sprint, and the payoff will come down the road. Does Santa know that you left the workshop? You know, we're all laughing our heads off. Did you have to borrow a reindeer to get down here? You're feeling strong, my friend. Call me Elf one more time. He's an angry elf. It's a long race, but right out of the gate, Watson Pharma is a big winner in the battle for Lipitor sales. The company, which has a deal with Pfizer, that as the pharma giant make and provide Watson with its own product, accounted for 97% of generic Lipitor sales in the early going. Rambaxi Labs is producing its own generic version and captured about 2.5%. German authorities gave AstraZeneca a boost by issuing their final positive recommendation for the company's heart drug Brilique, a.k.a. Berlinta, here in the U.S. It's the first med to be evaluated under the new German drug pricing system. 
Federal officials have given the green light to Novartis' North Carolina-based vaccine plant for production of flu vaccines in the event of an influenza outbreak. The $1 billion plant is the first in the U.S. to manufacture vaccines using cultured animal cells rather than the traditional, less flexible egg-based method. The plant is part of a 25-year public-private partnership with the HHS. Johnson & Johnson is releasing new batches of Doxel, a cancer drug that has been in short supply recently as a result of problems at contract manufacturer Ben Venue Labs. The new supply could help roughly 1,000 cancer patients. Ben Venue, a unit of Boehringer Ingelheim, manufactured the supply and was awaiting final quality testing when it closed its Bedford, Ohio plant in November to address manufacturing problems. Vertex Pharma will be getting its second new leader in two years as it seeks to become a more diversified drug company. Former Abbott Labs executive Jeffrey Leiden will become president and CEO effective February 1st. Time for Money Matters now, and speaking of money, how much did you spend on my gift? It's not the amount, it's the thought that counts. You didn't spend anything, did you? Well, let's just say it's a re-gifted item. Uh, That'll be fine. It's perfect for you. What could possibly go wrong. <laughs> Biogen IDEC is joining forces with South Korean conglomerate Samsung. The companies are combining for a $300 million investment to ramp up a new operation to develop, manufacture, and market biosimilars. Biogen will go to work with Samsung Biologics, a newly minted development and manufacturing group forged by the Korean conglomerate and CRO Quintiles. Baxter is plunking down $325 million to buy Synovus Life Technologies, a Minnesota-based maker of mechanical and biological devices for surgical procedures. The deal is expected to be completed during the first quarter of next year. Symmetry Medical is buying the surgical instruments business of Codman and Shirtliff, a unit of Johnson & Johnson, for $165 million in cash. The business will be combined with Symmetry's Hospital Direct Business, which will be renamed Symmetry Surgical, based in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay, so as promised, here's your Christmas present. Merry Christmas. A little too big to be jewelry. All right. What do you think? Oh! Glasses. Well, no, on you. You can never have too many of those around. The problem, Mike, is that these are empty wine glasses. I didn't get you a box of wine yet. Did they pay enough for an extra box of wine for me? Mm. <laughs> can I refill your eggnog for you? Get you something to eat? Drive you out to the middle of nowhere? Leave you for dead? No, I'm doing just fine, Clark. Finally, with the holidays here, there will be plenty of parties to attend, and for some folks, those social gatherings are awkward, even painful. Well, now there could be help. A new study from Concordia University that will be published in the journal Psychopharmacology has found that a form of intranasal oxytocin spray can fix those awkward social encounters. Oxytocin is a hormone released by the hypothalamus during breastfeeding and bonding experiences, such as sex and social engagement. It creates a wide range of physiological, emotional, and behavioral effects. The goal of the study was to see whether it can alter personality traits, and the results suggest it does. The participants in the study inhaled a synthetic version of oxytocin through a nasal spray and 90 minutes later completed questionnaires on how they felt. This study shows oxytocin can make people answer those questions differently and personality traits such as warmth, trust, altruism, and openness were amplified from previous results. Simply put, it makes people much more open to human interaction and everyone became more extroverted, even those extroverted to begin with. Unfortunately, for those of you hiding behind your eggnog at parties, there's no magic potion for shyness coming just around the corner. The researchers admit they're miles away from implementing it for use in the general public. Until then, use the old standby to make your parties fun. Alcohol. Well, Mike, I have a gift for you as well. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's a lump of coal. <sighs> well, I guess I have been naughty this year. You have, but what's your favorite thing in the whole wide world? Beer. Well, look what I have for you. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Lump of Coal Holiday Stout. It's perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. And these white glasses are working out well, too. Awesome. Well, cheers. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays to you folks. Thanks for tuning in all year long. We'll see you in the new year, 2012. Have a safe and happy holiday. Happy Holidays. i got to get a bottle over. <laughs>